Okay, so this was a neat idea. This was the solo I played on Bryce Randall Bickford's first record. Um, we were recording this, I think, somewhere near Charlotte, North Carolina, at Scott Salter's studio. And um, this was a solo I came up with. Uh, well, I'll just tell you about it. I'll just play it, and then I'll talk about it. The chord progression of the song is just A minor. G. D minor. Now, Randy's playing a, a really cool rhythm guitar part on an acoustic in um, dad-gad tuning, which kind of gives it some neat zeros and things like that. And so it was a challenge for me because I didn't want to just come in there and be all like... You know, just do box-type soloing. Um, so I had to... Yeah, actually, well, it's A minor. But anyway, I had to think of something that was kind of loose and unhinged and contemplative. And so here's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, okay, A minor. I was using those two notes there because, well, that's kind of the sixes or the Memphis notes of my A minor. That's a 14 and a 13. And I knew I could get away with this zero here. So my opening lick is like a... That's just basically playing the chord changes. The, the song changes to G. And again, I'm using sixes or sixes and zeros a lot too. So like I'm playing the chord, but then I'm using the zero strings as this kind of um, uncontrolled variable that like I'm not sure what's going to happen. So that's, yeah, there's my A minor. My G, which is again, the way I play guitar, everything is based off of bar chords for me. So I know that this is a G bar chord right here. And just, you know, I have other videos about this, but everything is stored away in my mind. Oh, G, I need a lick for a G chord. Oh, what about those, those sixes there? If you don't know those, that's 12-12, 10-10, um, 9-8. But I think in this case, again, I just use these two, which I'm like, cool, I'm safe, that's a G chord. Let that zero in there to just to create a question mark. The song's gonna drop to D minor, I'm like, sweet, D minor's right here. Here's my D minor bar chord. So I know I'm safe there, I know that's a chord tone. I'm like, well, that may be weirder. I knew that would work because E is the ninth of D, resolving to the, that minor third of that minor chord. So it creates these moments of unhingedness, these moments of dissonance. This is a very Dave Rawlings thing to do, uh, Johnny Marr thing to do. These moments of zeros giving us dissonance, but ultimately you're, you're, you're hopefully landing it all. I basically do the same thing again. Again, you know, repeat your ideas. That's an important part of improvising. Just stick with an idea to really hammer it into someone's head. I think I add that little 15 in there. Oh, by the way, of course, uh, I, I can tab out anything you see me play on my channel and send it to you for a small fee. Just hit me up in my email. I'm always happy to help people learn things. So that was my first two times, and I remember, like, truth be told, I think there's an edit right there on the on the record. I'm going to let the thing, the real version, play after I, sh after, um, I go through all this. Um, because then, yep, I remember we're like, okay, that's definitely a good first lick. And then, then we did the second half. I don't know where that came from, but yep, that's, that's kind of Rawlings also. Uh, 12, 13, 14, you know, that's still back to A minor, so I know that those notes work with an A minor. And that's, you know, the, a third. And that's blues on one string. Yeah, I'm just using that zero as a drone note. This was a neat one. 
that's a very Richard Lloyd thing to do. I think he does that in a see no evil. He does that chord. I think I must have just transcribed that when I went into the studio. I was like, I'm stealing that. Yep. Yeah, I totally just do that. So that's what I do for the G chord. And then. And then I jump over to Richard Thompson. So yeah, I'm cycling through Rawlings, Johnny Marr, Richard Thompson, um, and uh, Richard Lloyd, I think, for this solo, kind of like, depending on where I am on the fretboard, I'm like, that's going to work there. So yeah, when it lands on that D. And then this little lick. That's just five and three, but that, that ultimately, you know, that's all fits with D minor. Yeah. And then this is a cool thing. Uh, I don't think Lloyd does this or Thompson. I think this is me from playing around with it. Again, I always love this intersection of the fifth fret of the G with the zero there. Yeah. So five, three, five, oh, two. You get that weird. You get all sorts of neat things. Again, zeros. Zeros are so special to me. And then to close it out, back up for that A minor, so I'm on that C note there. And then what do I do? Oh, G sixes, Memphis notes. D minors. And I let that B in. That's just, yeah, D minor. And D minor again, because that's the octave higher. Again, letting the B into the party just because I'm weird. And then G. Oh, 15, 15. I think on the record I just do that. So, so yeah, I, I was always pretty proud of that solo, um, and Scott and Randy were happy with it. And I do think it illustrates a variety of concepts, so I thought it would be a neat one to share. Um, at this point, I think I will just fade over to the the album version, and of course, I'll put a link to Randy's, uh, uh, sorry, Bryce Randall Bickford's necessary um, internet stuff because he's a very talented songwriter and a, and a good friend of mine. So enjoy. Thank you. 